guys, how's it going? My name's Helena. Welcome back to my channel, Helena's Astrophotography. So I've had my telescope um, for almost three years now and I thought it was about time that I did a review for you guys. So in this video I'm going to be covering what the telescope comes with, how I think it performs for observational astronomy and how I think it performs for astrophotography. If you think that I've missed anything out and you'd like to know something about the telescope that I haven't mentioned in the video, make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. So without further ado guys, let's get on with the video. So I'm going to be starting from the top of the telescope and go and be going all the way down um, to the bottom, taking you through step by step. Um, also in these videos I have been um, referring to um, my telescope as Luna or the 10 inch Dobsonian but for the purposes of this review I'm going to be telling you her full name. So um, the telescope's full name is the Skywatcher Skyliner 250PX Parabolic Dobsonian Telescope. Wow! <laughs> so to start off with um, I'm going to be telling you guys what the telescope comes with. Um, I think this is a great amateur telescope. Um, I think it's more for observational astronomy than astrophotography, but I'll get onto that later in the video. Um, the reason I think it's perfect for amateur astronomers is because the amount of equipment it comes with is incredible. So um, it comes with this silver case here, um, full of loads of equipment um, to get you started and set you off on the right track. So it comes with a 17mm eyepiece, a 12.5mm eyepiece, a 10mm eyepiece and a 7.5mm eyepiece. It also comes with a 20mm eyepiece that's in the telescope right now. It comes with four filters and an infrared to normal torchlight torch. Now um, when I got the telescope and begun um, observing and observational astronomy um, I found all this equipment really helpful and I didn't need any add-ons to get started. Everything that came in the teles with the telescope um, I found very useful um, and I didn't need to buy any extras. I used all of these eyepieces to their full potential. The first thing I looked at through the eyepieces was the moon. Um, the moon is so crisp with these eyepieces, guys. If you buy this telescope and have these lenses, you really need to check out the moon. Its craters are crisp. It's awesome. Um, and then I took a look at Mars, um, and then I took a look at Jupiter and Saturn. I think my favourite thing that I've observed through this telescope um, is Jupiter, because I got Jupiter through a wild field eyepiece um, and saw one of the moons passing across, and that was just awesome. As for the other equipment in this box, apart from um, the eyepieces, we have the four filters, um, which I haven't gone on um, to look at yet. Um, and then we have the infrared torchlight, which is really useful because when you're out in um, stargazing, you don't want to use um, normal white torchlight as it can damage your eyes. We'll now move on to the area around the focusing tube. I was really impressed that Skywatcher included a T-ring in this package. A lot of companies don't do that and that's something you have to buy separately. But in this package, Skywatcher included it and this allowed me to attach the T-ring straight onto my camera and start taking beautiful images. The focuser is fantastic and it comes with this little knob um, that when you get to your focus point you can lock it in um, so it doesn't move. That is really handy as you won't ever lose your focus. Moving down into the left slightly we have this little handle. Um, this is again really handy um, for turning the scope. The scope turns really smoothly and it doesn't create any extra sound. So the primary mirror has a diameter of 254 millimetres. Uh, the focal length is 1200 millimeters. If we carry on moving down to nearer the base, there's a really handy eyepiece holder. I use this regularly when I'm out imaging um, so that I can hold eyepieces and I don't lose them. They do actually advertise on some websites saying this scope um, is extremely portable. Um, I don't agree with that. Um, this is just due to my experience. Um, with the telescope, I don't agree that it's very portable um, because when you're carrying around um, a lot and up and down, especially with me carrying it up and down the decking, um, the primary mirror moves and I have to realign it quite often, more than I should have to do. But you're probably saying, Helena, you, of course you have to move it so much, you've got to move it up and down the deckings and get it out to the garden, the mirrors are obviously going to move. 
Yeah, but if you have a car and you have to put the telescope in the boot of the car, the mirrors are going to shake up really, really easily. That's actually one of the only cons to this telescope. Now we're going to move on to my views um, on how I think the telescope performs for observational astronomy. Now we're going to move on to my views um, on how I think this telescope performs for observational astronomy and for astrophotography. Now obviously this telescope isn't optimised for astrophotography, um, but if you're keen to do this with a Dobsonian, you can install a Raspberry Pi computer into the base, because as you know this telescope isn't on a guiding mount. This does mean that there is quite a lot of camera shake um, when you're trying to shoot photographs, but for observational astronomy, it's really stable um, and you can get really clear views of the night sky with wild field eyepieces. With this telescope, I've seen all the way up to Saturn's rings. Um, fantastic views, but obviously, because um, I have to attach loads and loads of adapters onto my camera, um, meaning it's further and further away from the focusing tube. And um, Because I have to do this, um, I can't find focus, so what I see through the eyepiece, see I see Jupiter, a big round Jupiter and I see the great red spot and all the stripes, I won't see that up. If it's like this in the, in the um, eyepiece, it'll probably come out like this um, in the actual photograph um, because I'm further away from the focus tube than I was when I was just observing it. There are apparently solutions to this, but I need to do more research into that. Even in a slight breeze, just for observations though, not for normal astrophotography, um, just for observations, this telescope tends to keep um, the image really, really still, um, which is really nice um, for observing so you can see the details um, in all the planetary objects. Finally, I'm going to move on to some little add-ons that I think you guys um, should invest in if you want to get further and further um, into this hobby. So first off we have this Celestron XL LX um, eyepiece, it's a wide field 25mm uh, eyepiece. Secondly is a 2 times Barlow lens, um, this is particularly for observing things like the moon so you can get a 2 times magnification um, on what you were originally working with. Um, you can also use this for astrophotography as well um, by uh, using this adapter which is the third thing by using this adapter so you can attach the Barlow lens onto this and this onto the camera and the camera onto the telescope um, and you'll have a happy night of imaging. I'll put a link to all of these products down below um, so make sure to check them out if you're interested. I'm getting my new equipment really really soon, I'm really excited and um, within two weeks so make sure to um, stay tuned and check out for those videos. They might not be um, the regular Wednesday videos, I might do them as specials. I won't obviously review them the day I get them because I won't have had a chance to go out and take photos with them. Um, so I'll give it a few weeks before I give you guys a review, but I'll definitely be doing some unboxings. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, happy stargazing.